Welcome to God and Country Biblical Exposition. This week's program is my annual back to school program about public education, government schools. Back in 1963, in the case Abington School District versus Shemp, in an eight to one decision, the courts ruled that the teaching of the Bible in public schools is illegal. Now, one can dress it up and say that the courts ruled that it was unconstitutional, uh, that it was separation of church and state, that this was a matter of fairness or justice. But the essence of the ruling was that the teaching of Christ and his moral law was determined to be an illegal activity in public schools. Our children would not be taught the Christian faith. The minority opinion was written by Justice Potter Stewart. Stewart begins by explaining the conflict. The First Amendment declares that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Do you see the issue here? Outlawing Bible reading in public school is a law prohibiting the free exercise of religion but at the same time, it is seen as a law prohibiting the state from establishing a religion. The First Amendment is contradictory. Therefore, it all comes down to what a society wants to favor. The free exercise of religion or making it illegal for the state to be religious. The American mind in 1963 favored godless public education. Stewart writes, it is a fallacious oversimplification to regard these two provisions as establishing a single constitutional standard of separation of church and state. We err in the first place if we do not recognize as a matter of history and as a matter of the imperatives of a free society that religion and government must necessarily interact in countless ways. Secondly, the fact is that while in many contexts the Establishment Clause and the Free Exercise Clause fully complement each other, there are areas in which a doctrinaire reading of the Establishment Clause leads to irreconcilable conflict with the Free Exercise Clause, what I just explained. A single obvious example should suffice to make the point. Spending federal funds to employ chaplains for the armed forces might be said to violate the Establishment Clause. Yet a lonely soldier stationed at some faraway outpost could surely complain that a government which did not provide him the opportunity for pastoral guidance was affirmatively prohibiting the free exercise of his religion. And such examples could readily be multiplied. Then Stewart goes on to explain that historically, the First Amendment was never meant to throw religion out of public schools, and the court's ruling is a discrimination against religion. And completely prohibiting Bible reading is an unnecessary leap. Schools can certainly find a way to teach religion without being coercive. But again, the American mind at this time was no religion is freedom. Here's an article from 2013 in The Atlantic, 50 years after Abington versus Shemp. A dissenter looks back on school prayer. Ellery Shemp, the 16-year-old student who brought the case against Bible reading, is still celebrating the ruling. Today, Ellery Shemp is a 70 72-year-old retired physicist from Boston. He has spent the last few months at events celebrating the 50-year anniversary of Abington versus Shemp, including one at the First Unitarian Church of Philadelphia, where a pair of religious school teachers and children, uh, ranging in ages from 4 to 13, perform a skit reenacting Shemp's original homeroom protest. I was touched by the children here, said Champ, grinning upon taking the floor after the skit. First of all, I noticed that the children didn't know the Lord's Prayer. You can't blame me for that. 
So on Judgment Day, this man will have to give an account. The irony is that the United States has done the exact same thing that the communists did in the Soviet Union. Prohibit Christianity in public schools. But today, after the fall of communism in Russia, Russia actually allows the teaching of Christianity in their public schools. Here's an article from World Magazine. From communist to Christianity, two former Soviet citizens are using their faith education experience to help their homeland. Oleg Voskorensky, his Christian writings have become part of a nationwide fourth grade curriculum throughout Russia called Introduction to Christian Culture. Part of a religious cultural education project the state was developing. I never even prayed for this opportunity, says Voskorensky. God just gave it to me. He began training teachers nationwide on how to present his Christian material to children. The Russian Federation has reprinted his curriculum for 10 years now. Uh, Children and their teachers from Siberia to St. Petersburg and Moscow use it. So what a difference between these two men, Voskorensky and this Unitarian, Ellery Shemp. The one is working to teach children about Christ, the other is opposing it. As a side note here, Ocean Grove is rebuilding their pier in the shape of a cross, and a liberal Presbyterian pastor named Douglas Grote is opposing it because he believes in the myth of neutrality, that the institution of the state is to be godless, That's man-made reasoning. That's not what the Bible teaches about the role of the state. Well, the removal of Christ's teaching from the public school is exactly what the Sanhedrin ruled against the apostles in Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verse 18. And when they had summoned them, they commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. This was the first persecution in the early church. And in 1963, this was the beginning of Christian persecution in the United States. Teachers were not allowed to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. And with the teaching of Christianity removed from the public schools, how do you think that would end? Over the last 70 years, America has legalized and practiced pornography, abortion, homosexuality, homosexual marriage, transgenderism, drug use not to mention the increase in crime, the economic sins of greed and socialism and communism. You know, the big controversy in the news over the last few months has been parents showing up at school board meetings complaining that public schools are teaching transgenderism and critical race theory and communism, revisionist American history. But that's no surprise. That's the inevitable results of making the teaching of Christianity illegal in public schools. What do we expect? With Christianity removed, the religion of pagan humanism fills the void. And although it's just as much a religion as Christianity because it's based upon transcendent truths, the teaching of pagan, the pagan worldview is perfectly legal. It's embraced. When the courts outlawed Christianity, they actually violated the Establishment Clause by establishing the religion of secular humanism by default. And today, you know, administrators realize that public schools cannot operate in an ethical vacuum. So they have incorporated SEL teaching into all subjects. That's social and emotional learning which basically teaches the opposite of Christianity, that you're to believe in yourself rather than to believe in God, that you're to be true to your authentic self rather than in Christianity, we must fight the sinful flesh, and to accept all diversity and sexual behavior rather than the biblical teaching that there is a moral right and wrong that comes from God. And rather than hiring Christian chaplains in our schools, Chaplains are the DEI officers, diversity, equity, and inclusion officers, and they're the high priests of this new religion. Here's an article. 
Parents push back on American colleges promoting DEI initiatives. Some universities across America are requiring compliance from faculty in the form of signed diversity, equity, and inclusion DEI statements as condition for tenure or promotion, arguing that DEI across college campuses is a top priority. Well, this is also happening in K through 12 school districts. Now, it's parading under the guise of being anti-racist, but the doctrine being taught is that moral relativism is justice and fairness. What's considered righteousness is moral freedom to do what you want and that God's moral law and Western values are oppression and that all things must be equal in morals and in values. It was a complaint of Cain in Genesis chapter 4 that it was not fair for Abel's offering to be accepted and for Cain's to be denied. The doctrine of Cain was that there should be no moral superiority. And that's the doctrine of Lucifer. Jude 11, Woe to them, for they have gone the way of Cain. And this was the condemnation of ancient Israel. Ezekiel 22, Her priests have done violence to my law and have profaned my holy things. They have made no distinction between the holy and the profane, and they have not taught the difference between the unclean and the clean. And Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Here's a question. Could a Christian back in 1963 have predicted where the public schools would end up 70 years in the future in 2022? Absolutely. There were pastors and Christian teachers who were warning that the removal of the Bible from public schools would turn America into Sodom and Gomorrah. And so it's come to pass. Even the famous reformer Martin Luther wrote in the 1500s, I have eyes no one places child where scriptures do not reign paramount. Every institution in which men are not increasingly occupied with the word of God will become corrupt. Martin Luther. But back in 1963, our judges, our politicians didn't believe that because the abandonment of Christianity in the hearts of the American people was well underway. Parents didn't complain about the removal of God's word from schools because as unbelievers, they didn't value Christ. The great sin of humanity has always been willful unbelief. They could not enter in because of unbelief. I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. If public schools eliminated the teaching of science or math or reading, because it was hard or offensive for some students. Parents would be irate. They would march on Washington. They would say that any school that doesn't teach math or science or reading is a non-school. Well, the teachers will say, well, you could teach your students that at home. Well, parents would then say, why even then send your children to school? But removing the teaching of Christ from public schools and there's no protest. Because for most parents, they don't consider Christ as true and as essential as reading science and math. Just like COVID, the churches were unessential, but the liquor stores and, and Walmart were essential. Any school that doesn't teach Christ is a non-school because it's rejecting the very essence and the reason for education. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception, according to the traditions of men, according to the elementary principles of the world, rather than according to Christ. But this was the big test, wasn't it? Would the American people value Christ or turn to man? The American people failed that test. 
just like ancient Israel went into apostasy. The majority of the American people made their choice. They decided that they could educate their children without God and everything would be just fine. How do you think that will end? Not only sexual deviance and drugs, but even the loss of educational standards. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, the knowledge of God, I will also reject you from being my priest. Since you have forsaken the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Isaiah 17, 10. For you have forgotten the God of your salvation and have not remembered the rock of your refuge. Therefore you plant delightful plants and set them with vine slips of a strange God. But the harvest will be a heap in the day of sickliness and incurable pain. Or Proverbs chapter 1, verse 30. Uh, they would not accept my counsel. They spurned all my reproof. So they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be satiated with their own devices. For the waywardness of the naive will kill them and the, complacencies, the complacency of fools will destroy them. Alexander Solzhenitsyn, when asked why has all of these terrible things happened to Russia? His answer, because men have forgotten God. The removal of God's word from our public schools will not end well. The atheist Richard Dawkins in his book, The God Delusion, wrote the following. It requires quite a low self-regard to think that should belief in God suddenly vanish from the world, we would all become callous and selfish hedonists with no kindness, no charity, no generosity, nothing that would deserve the name of goodness. So do you hear what Dawkins is saying? He believes that man is intrinsically good, and therefore people can be good without God and without God's truth. As the billboard atheists put up around Christmas time, be good for goodness sake. As if we can raise good citizens in public school without God. God's going to take that challenge. And God will show for the historic record where the abandonment of God leads. The public schools, the administrators, the lawyers, the courts, the politicians have challenged God. And God will not let that challenge go unanswered. Jeremiah chapter 17, thus saith the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in mankind and makes flesh his strength and whose heart turns away from the Lord. The public schools are under a curse as an institution. And as the scripture warns in Revelation chapter 18, verse 4, come out from her, my people, so that you will not participate in her sins and receive of her plagues. You know, it's one thing to go into Sodom as a preacher of righteousness, if you're allowed to preach. It's a whole other thing to go into Sodom, as did Lot, Abraham's nephew, because it looked like well-watered lands, and he would sit in their gate. Our children are not to be evangelists for the public schools, to the teachers, to the administrators. Our children are there to be discipled. As a poster that I recently received from Turning Point, if we send our children to Caesar to be educated, don't be surprised if they come back as little Romans. Quote from Voting Vody Balkum. Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, verse 40, A pupil is not above his teacher, but everyone after he has been fully trained will be like his teacher. Now, in this program, I didn't begin with discussing educational stories in the news because I want us to see the big picture. We can get lost in all of the details about parents protesting at school board meetings over the change of curriculum and miss the big picture. That the schools have abandoned God because of unbelief. That they're under curse. That the public schools have actually challenged God. And that the unsaved have conveniently used the legal system to isolate their children from being taught the word of God. 
so that we have a polarization in our society between the minority of Christian families who raise their children with a Christian worldview and the majority of the unsaved who are now being taught the pagan worldview and going into further and further darkness. With each generation, the children and the teachers are becoming more and more biblically illiterate. And it's not going to get any better. Public schools are not going to turn around. My township in New Jersey had a public meeting to discuss the new sex education curriculum being pushed by the state. The school board voted not to implement the curriculum. That's a good thing. But it's a deception because most school boards are accepting the curriculum and the godless and moral education is already incorporated into every subject. Parents can opt out of the sex ed, but not the inclusion and diversity taught in K through 12. The foundational philosophy of moral freedom is already being taught in every subject, especially now with the SEL education. So don't be fooled by these few school board victories. The teachers are still teaching leftism. If, if parents object to the teaching of CRT or transgenderism, the whole thing will just go undercover. Because it's not as if these administrators and these teachers will, will suddenly say, oh, the school board voted down the curriculum. I'm going to repent of more, my worldview. Here, here's an article that makes the point. Project Veritas, the news organization that specializes in, in undercover video, caught a principal in Connecticut explaining their leftist indoctrination. Uh, this principal said, believe it or not, the open-minded, more progressive teachers are actually more savvy about delivering a Democrat message without really having to mention politics. So it's subtle. They, the teachers I hire, will never say, oh, this is a Democrat way of doing this. They'll just make it the norm. And this is how we handle things. It's subtle. That's how you get away with it. He also said that his goal is for students to eventually vote Democrat. And when it comes to hiring teachers, he said, if they're conservative, we don't hire them. Quote, if someone is raised hardcore Catholic, it's like they're brainwashed. You can never change their mindset. For one position, I think we had 30 applicants. So out of all of those applicants, I don't think I interviewed anyone over the age of 30 the older you get, the more set you are in your ways and the more conservative you get. Here's another article from the Wall Street Journal. Schools have long been mediocre. Now they're woke, woke too. University of Wisconsin campus openly embraces a Marxist program called Critical Pedagogy. Uh, quote, I've studied for a master's degree in education at the University of Wisconsin-Madison in 2015. My program was batty. We made Black Lives Matter uh, friendship bracelets. We passed around popsicle sticks to designate whose turn it was to talk, while professors compelled us to discuss our life's traumas. We read through, through poems, through the lenses of Marxism and critical race theory, in preparation for our students doing the same. Our final projects were acrostic poems or ironic rap videos. At the time, I figured my experience was unique. Surely, I thought other teacher prep programs focused on human cognition, behavioral management, child psychology, and other educational practicalities. Alas, my program was mild compared with what current graduates must suffer. The Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty has reviewed the required coursework for 14 programs for teachers to be in the Badger State. These programs produce about 80% of all teaching graduates in the state each year. What they found was shocking. Worldview building and ideological manipulation takes precedent over teacher preparation. What else would we expect from institutions that abandon God? Romans chapter 1, in abandoning God, they became futile in their speculations and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. 
Here's a piece from a veteran school administrator. I was a teacher, and I know firsthand progressive policies in the classroom have failed. After teaching in elementary, middle, and high school science classes and directing uh, the science teachers and curriculum for a 35,000 student district, I've concluded that our modern methods of managing student behavior are an abysmal failure. I've watched as teachers try to coddle, affirm, and indulge their way to a great classroom, only to be met with disappointment, disrespect, and violence. The behavioral practices and classroom management techniques we were forced to implement are responsible. Restorative justice, affirmation-based conversations, and soft promises have replaced the clear expectations and consequences that provide children with safety and consistency over the last 200 years. Here's an article. An elementary teacher in Utah, she says she's challenging the status quo by overpowering the straight cis white men books in her classroom with books depicting diverse people, including characters of color and different gender identities and sexual orientations. This teacher is gloating over the fact that she's introducing children to homosexuality and transgenderism. These principals and teachers are evangelists for secular humanism. Don't be naive. And if they're not radical evangelists for leftism, they're often educators who simply don't have the biblical discernment or convictions that they, that they ought to have, so they unwittingly teach godlessness. You know, I've talked to many professing Christians who, who work in the public school system, and they tell me that they're being witnesses for Christ there. And I ask them how. And seriously, this is what I hear. Well, I wear a cross chain around my, my neck, or I have praying hands on my desk. Or when a child sneezes, I say, God bless you. Or if a student asks me in private, I tell him I'm a Christian. These teachers are self-censoring. These churchgoers actually believe that they're being a witness for Christ in public schools, when in fact this is what it means to hide your lamp under a bushel, Matthew 5.15, and to be saltless, Matthew 5.13. You know, the LGBT crowd must be laughing at Christians because they can teach their ideology outwardly because it's not considered religious and it's considered tolerance. But Christians have to be silent. If you're not outwardly speaking the word of God, you're not being a witness for Christ. Now, you might say, my witness is my nice personality. If you do not proclaim the word of God, the students are not connecting your goodness to Christ. You're only giving your good influence to a false gospel. You're using your talents to support an evil system. Satan wants nothing more than for good Christian people to stay silent and put a good face on his godless institution. Here's some more stories. PJ Media, Parents Against Pronouns. School counselors in Utah, uh, in a junior high school, gave out placards for the children to hold up to indicate their preferred pronouns, whether they wanted to be called he or she or they or z, zim, zer, this. Parents found out about this and complained and the placards were removed. But it's not as if these school counselors were fired and new counselors were hired who would teach Genesis 127 that in the beginning God made the male and female. In fact, teachers are still not allowed to teach that there are two genders. That's considered offensive. That would be teaching religion. So they are at the very least to be silent concerning God's plan regarding gender. It's even considered to be an offense for teachers to say girls and boys. Gender is not to be emphasized. You know, transgenderism in public school is no surprise because the ungodly have outlawed the teaching of Genesis 127. So what do you think would happen? Another big story in the news is that President Biden is claiming that he's going to pay off college loans, $300 billion worth of college loans. 
I just finished my last program about the $750 billion inflation bill, about how these politicians cannot stop spending money, how moral lawlessness also produces economic lawlessness. And then the announcement is made that the Biden administration wants to print off another $300 billion to pay off student loans one week after passing the $750 billion inflation bill. They just cannot stop spending money. They believe they can print wealth out of thin air. But first, Biden really doesn't have the authority to do this. Congress is supposed to pass the spending bills. Second, the amount he wants to pay off will actually amount to more like $1 trillion. And the whole thing doesn't make sense. Why should non-college students, which make up about 75% of the people in America, pay off the loans of college students who make more money. And going forward, the government cannot pay off these previous loans without the government also paying the tuition for current college students, which is part of the plan. The Democrats want to buy votes, but they've been after this for a long time. Government-funded college for everyone, colleges funded by forced taxation. And this is about more than a social Marxist approach to economics. The left sees secular education as their church. And they want to fund leftist teachers so they can indoctrinate students. The public would not freely pay for women's studies or feminist studies or CRT studies or Marxist studies. But these leftist ideologues can get these studies funded through taxpayer dollars. These universities would close if it weren't for public funding. The left is funding their religion. This is their moral crusade to right the world. That university indoctrination will change the world for good. When one doesn't have God in the gospel, this becomes a secular substitute. And they want this indoctrination not only in colleges, but now they're pushing it into the K through 12th grades. Here's an article about how the Republicans in the state of New Jersey plan to deal with the new LGBTQ curriculum being pushed by the state. The three R plan, repeal, replace, and restore. Sounds great, but Republicans in the state of New Jersey don't have the votes to do anything. The state house and the education system has been taken over by the left. The only recourse for parents is to vote with their feet, to get out of public schools and by so doing, collapse the influence of public schools. What if every Christian parent pulled their children out of the public schools? You know, some believe that pullout would be bad because we would lose our influence in the public schools to keep them straight. Some believe that that would be good because it would save those children and isolate the public schools as dens of iniquity. Well, forget the reasoning. It's not about what we feel or what we surmise, but what does the Word of God say? Deuteronomy chapter 6. These words which I'm commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your sons, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. Now, in regard to public schools, there's some good news. In the state of Florida, parents can get vouchers from the state to pay for private Christian education. I believe it's up to $7,000 per child, which is more than enough to pay for a private Christian school. And it's perfectly legal. In fact, there was a Supreme Court ruling recently, a case in Maine, that codified into federal law that it's not illegal for the state to give parents education dollars to go to a religious school of their choice. This is another benefit from Trump's appointment of conservative judges. Also, Arizona has recently passed a similar school choice law. Headlines, Arizona has just achieved the biggest school choice win in American history. So there are at least two states where private Christian education is on economic par 
with secular state education. And that precedent scares the left because they know they survive only by monopoly power. Leftism cannot have competition. They have to control all. Like the old Soviet Union had to build walls uh, not to keep people out, but to keep the people in. And if the privatization of education is successful in these two states, lower cost, better outcomes, other states will be pressured by the example. If two states can do it, then all states can do it. Another piece of good news is what COVID did to public education. It destroyed it. It sped up its decline. Schools were shut out of fear and greed and students weren't being taught. Parents learned that they could do a better job teaching their children at home. COVID forced parents to break with tradition. Homeschooling in America more than doubled under COVID. From the U.S. Census, from 1999 to 2012, about 3% of American children were homeschooled. And that held consistent. But by the fall of last year, 11% of households with school-age children reported homeschooling. And those were households who were reporting true homeschooling rather than virtual learning through public or private schools. So God helped the righteous get out of public schools, using COVID to open eyes to the corruption and the better alternatives in education. I believe the solution to America's moral decline is reversing the state's secular education monopoly, as in the famous quote, whoever controls the education of our children controls the future. America can be saved if enough parents value the teaching of Christ. God may make it easier for them by allowing state money to follow parent choice, but it still has to be done for Christ. Otherwise, these private schools will be just as godless as the public schools. Now, my take on this is that although a minority of families will opt out, the majority of Americans will not change course. The nation as a whole, the unsaved, are still heading for further decline in judgment. Here's an interesting article. Most voters dissatisfied with how schools are teaching sexuality gender identity and race sounds good until you look at the details of the poll that is only 58 percent of those surveyed feel that way the other 42 percent aren't bothered by it and i guarantee you that the 58 percent will do nothing to reverse the decline conservative parents are not winning the culture war in public schools we're losing the culture more and more every year The Christian foundation is being eroded. It's like Christians are doing some some framing in a room on the third floor, but the foundation of the house is being eroded. The new rooms we built might look nice, but they're being built on a foundation of sand. So Revelation 18, come out from her, my people. Now, of course, we still have to speak out at school board meetings. We're to do good unto all men. Ezekiel 33, we're to warn the wicked. Isaiah 62, I have appointed watchmen all day and all night. They will never keep silent. You who remind the Lord, take no rest for yourselves. But as far as the education of our own children, vote with your feet. If they persecute you in one city, Jesus said, flee to the next. What I want to leave you with today is a renewed conviction that Christ has to be first in education. Otherwise, it's no education at all. It actually becomes satanic. We need to increase our conviction in this matter, and we need to take the stand that the righteous man takes in Psalm chapter 1. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the paths of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. That's the godless government schools. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yield its fruit in its season, its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does he prospers. 
You want your children to be prosperous, but put them in a place where the word of God is supreme. Thank you for listening. Thanks for your support. The website is GodandCountryRadio.org. Subscribe, like, share, leave a comment below. And may Jesus Christ reign. Oh,